Okay, so today we are going to deal the third unit in the second block. And uh, the title of that unit is Challenges During Adolescence. Challenges. What are the challenges they face during this period? And uh, it is clear that our adolescents, most of our adolescents, adolescents enough love luxury. They are beyond the luxury, the current trends, the fashions, etc. And they have uh, attained a certain amount of bad manners, contempt for authority. So they do not know, or even if they do uh, know, they are not showing the respect and regard towards the elders. And in a way, we can tell that so they have uh, practiced a lot of things that cannot be accepted by the elders, like the parents or even the teachers. So they are behaving according to their own wish and will. So that's a speciality that we can see. That is a thing that we can see from the current adolescent behavior. So we know that adolescent is full of challenges for any child. So the transformation that happened from the childhood to adolescent, it is not possible every adolescent group to uh, accept the changes in a moment. And they are slowly trying to realize that, okay, they have been transformed from a, uh, one stage to the other stage. So that slowly they will be have to uh, accommodate and accept the changes. We know that most problems and challenges faced by the adolescents are due to the failure in understanding the anatomical, their morphological and emotional changes expected during the adolescence. So they may have a lot of changes and all the changes uh, will be understood by the uh, with the following titles like uh, the biological challenges, cognitive challenges, psychological challenges, social challenges, then moral and spiritual challenges, then psychosocial challenges, and some sort of other challenges. So can you hear me? Hope yes, you can sir. hear me well. Okay. Then we discuss now the biological challenges. So that is totally related to the uh, body structure. Okay, so that is something related to the uh, physiological changes. So they clearly present the biological changes that clearly present the adolescent with major challenges. So the adolescent has to cope with body changes which may be uh, disturbing and worrying and with the emergence of sexual urges that drive the young person into the exploration of new relationship which themselves uh, produce new social challenges so when uh, okay when the adolescent are fond of uh, uh, making more uh, decisions in their life and when they are fond of practicing some new behaviors in this period so they have to understand they have to realize that whether it is good for them or uh, whether it is not apt for them so the physiological change and that includes or the biological change that includes the physiological changes sexual changes emotional uh, change etc and what are the physiological change that happens in biological uh, dimension so during the adolescent period uh, major uh, physiological changes takes place so the young person grows in height weight and strength they develop sexually and changes uh, in appearances that's happening the physiological changes occur over a period of time so they happen at different ages at different rates so consequently uh, there may be issues for the adolescent who may feel embarrassed self-conscious and awkward and out of pace with peers who were developing at the different rate so it's therefore not surprising for us that 
many adolescents become very very anxious about their appearance so they will be more conscious about their physique so whether i am looking good whether i have the uh, attract a personality others will get attracted or not so all these kind of things will be there and that will be definitely affect their self confidence as well so they are worrying uh, about their physique so they have to maintain it so we can uh, easily tell that all the adolescents in a, uh, in this their age group uh, when they are in the school or in the, the colleges of their beginning uh, it's very easy to understand that the way that uh, give attention priority for their physical uh, maintenance especially for their body maintenance then sexual changes will be there so we know that in puberty a poor puberty significant increase can be noticed during the time of uh, puberty and uh, the production of sexual hormones uh, happening there uh, these effect not only in the changes to the body as described uh, uh, above but also generate an increase in sexual arousal desire urge in both males and females so this is the period uh, when they are having a sexual interest okay the they will start to attract it uh, to experience with the new things they want to uh, experience the sexual pleasure so all those things will be uh, coming out of their ignorance so the level of maturity that will be questioned there the level of morality or their level of social uh, culture that will be questioned there okay all these things are happening there and a sexual drive arises the adolescent is confronted with issues of personal sexuality and a sexual identity so additionally so this is a part of the process of movement away from dependence on their parents and family so they want to get uh, independent from uh, and they do not have any uh, uh, question of dependency with their parents or their family so during this time so they will become involved in sexual experimentation so they are focusing on knowing and understanding and hearing uh, about sexuality and the sexual matters and however for others the sexual feelings of early adolescents are managed uh, through the use of fantasy then we can see emotional change also uh, included in the biological challenges and the emotional change we were talking about the emotions yesterday and for adolescents the rise in sexual hormones may also pressure the young person's emotional condition so this is the time where they are uh, conveying or communicating their emotions maturely or immaturely most of the time they are not able to share their feelings or even communicate their emotions uh, with maturity so that's why we call it as emotional instability or even emotional immaturity so they should uh, equip and possess a sense of emotional intelligence so that they can control and they can uh, communicate their emotions according to the persons or according to the situations and their uh, wherever they are okay so they act in occurrence with other major changes which are impacting on the young person such as changes in social relationship changes in the beliefs and attitudes values and changes in the uh, self perception so totally they are getting changed in their every aspects of their be, uh, as a being okay then we move on to the uh, next challenge that is the cognitive challenges okay so there are cognition we know that cognition refers the thinking skill so it's a faculty of mind that we are thinking and we are understanding we are resonating okay the things so it is the ability to identify whatever is good for me and whatever is bad for me so that is very much related to the rationality that is considered as the most precious gift that we got from the creator and uh, this cognition refers to thinking skill and the intellectual skills that allow for you to perceive acquire understand and respond to the information so the way that we respond the way that we understand and the way that we perceive the way that we acquire the things all these things are included in the cognitive skill and this includes the abilities to pay attention 
the ability to remember things, the process of information, then the ability to solve the problems, the way that we organize and structure or reorganize the information. So whatever uh, that we communicate and act upon the information. So that's uh, the main thing that we have to understand with the cognitive skill. So the challenges. So there will be a lot of challenges that may be uh, related to the cognitive skills. Sometimes that we have the tendency, the adolescent people especially, they have the tendency to argue for the sake of arguing. Though they know that this is uh, right or this is wrong, but they will not, their ego will not let them to accept it and they will start to argue. That's the thing. So to argue for the sake of arguing. So they want to make the thing as in their comfort zone. That's why they argue. Then the other challenge is to be self-centered. So they want to get self-centered and whatever they tell that should be true. Others should accept that. That self should be accepted. That's why uh, they are practicing this uh, challenge. And to constantly find fault in adult's position. Okay, so they want to uh, uh, make others know that, okay, I am right and the adult, the senior one or the uh, elder people, they are not uh, right. Whatever the person who is in this group, he tells everything that should be acceptable and the others are not correct. So it's constantly find fault in the adult's position. Then to be overly dramatic, you know that so they are having uh, an attitude or they are having a tendency to act. So they will um, uh, convey or they will express themselves with a high amount of acting. Okay, it's something like a drama. So we experience when we are in the school or even when we are in our family, the children in this particular group, they act a lot. Okay, so they are acting their sadness. They're acting the, their problem with the others in, in order to get away from the, uh, what do you call, guilt or get away from the blaming from others. Okay, so they act. So they want the things to get controlled by themselves so to be overly dramatic so adolescence is a we know that it's a stressful period of growth and this period poses many challenges to the adolescent such as finding identity and values so we were talking about all these things uh, before and it could be a repeti uh, repetition and now we move on to the next challenge that is the psychological challenge that is a kind of individual individuation or emotional responses so these are the thing that we could see uh, when we think of the uh, psychological challenges individuation and emotional response so what do you mean by that individuation so we know that what individuality is so to understand this we have to know that a child is connected with uh, the parents and family the adolescent group they detach from the family and from the parents now they're becoming a separate individuals so in other words we can tell that the individuation occurs so once they are uh, transformed from the childhood to the adolescent they are getting individuation okay so the process of individuation involves the progress of relative freedom from the family relationships so they are getting a sense of free from the family members or their parents so the processes of uh, establishing a personal identity and achieving individuation have implications socially so the adolescent can only create concepts of self uh, within the framework of relations with others so it is also seeking to uh, establish separateness through the boundaries yeah, uh, that can lead to adolescents prone to difficulties in adapting to the new uh, circumstances where they need to deal with situations on their own. Okay, so there could be some sort of emotional responses as well in these uh, psychological challenges. So adolescent, they progress as adolescents, they progress on uh, their journey of self-discovery. So during this period, they are. Uh, becoming more creative they are in uh, 
uh, trying to find their own meaning of others and meaning of themselves and whatever is surrounding them surrounding them so they continually have to adjust to the new experiences the encounters and situations while at the same time adjusting to the biological cognitive and physiological changes so this is both stressful and anxiety provoking for them so this is a type uh, that that's why we call it as it's a challenging period so they have to undergo a lot of challenges the challenges that happen the changes that they have to confront so this is both stressful and anxiety provoking for them so it is not surprising therefore that adolescents demonstrate a decreased ability to tolerate so they lose their patience uh, their ability to bear with the things so assimilate and accommodate the changes so the adolescent developmental stage is therefore characterized by the emotional reactivity and a high intensity of emotional uh, response so this makes uh, it difficult for adolescents to control and modulate their behavioral response which at times may be inappropriately extreme so the stimuli of uh, relatively minor implication for both uh, adults may respond in significant mood uh, mood swings so there are chance of a lot of mood swings for the adolescents who may respond with the unexpectedly high level of emotions including excitement anger sadness all these negative emotions will be there like depression embarrassment etc so the adolescents clearly have a difficult time so they are uh, really having a difficult time dealing with the heightened intensity of their emotions and reactions so here a major disruptive emotion of early adolescence is that is shame so they are having this emotion almost all the time that means uh, 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 they repeatedly experience the numbers of ridicule uh, embarrassment and awkwardness and feel offended and ashamed of them okay so they will not come forward unless and until they are forced okay so they want to be in a safe zone always and they lose their confidence sometime up to some extent so whatever they do will not be accepted by others so all these things make them in a sense of tension and uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, confusion for them so it's therefore uh, understandable that they incline to develop strong defense mechanisms which may include the denial rejection projection and regression so the these defense mechanism that play an important role in the way early adolescents uh, react to the situation and interact with others so inappropriate uh, behavior may often uh, be a result of these internal ego defending mechanisms so when they are uh, practicing the defense mechanism some sort of inappropriate behavior will be coming out from them that's uh, not not by them but the situation or the stages of that particular challenges make them to act in that way then we move on to the next one that is social challenges a uh, uh, lot of social challenges will be lay, uh, there like the society's expectations accepting one's physical and sexual role establishing new peer associations with both sexes then achieving emotional autonomy of parents uh, selecting and preparing for a job then developing rational skills and perceptions indispensable for a civic expertise then achieving assurance of economic independence then acquiring socially uh, responsible behavior pattern preparing for marriage and family life then building conscious uh, conscious values that are harmonious with one's environment etc 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 so these are some important points that we have to remember when we think of the social challenges among the adolescents so in uh, 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 this is a kind of the social challenges could be considered as uh, or, uh, is also considered as a major challenge or uh, in the adolescent group so they face uh, the need to find their place in the society so they want to prove themselves in the society as a being and they have to achieve a sense of appropriate position in that place so this is a process of socialization so they're trying to uh, identify uh, oneself with the society and 
that involves the adolescents in cooperation with the society usually uh, this process occurs at the same time as the search for personal identity so this is the time that they are trying to have a personal identity so in fact uh, the socialization process and the search for personal identity are strongly interrelated and interdependent we it is inseparable in nature that means they have a sense of identity and they have to get identified with the society then socialization enhances the sense of personality identity and that development of personal identity helps the adolescent to deal with the society's expectations and standards the wider society uh, parents family and peer groups all have expectations regarding the adolescent that uh, they that are based on the suitable postulation that the adolescent is now becoming capable of performing differently. So these combined expectations uh, with a newly acquired uh, psychological and cognitive changes and the challenges uh, the adolescent to make changes in their social behavior. There could be some sort of society expectations so that could be considered as a part of the challenge uh, uh, in certain communities we understand that they have got their own beliefs values morals and outlooks adolescents tend to mature a positive sense of self uh, in regard to that community structure so in contrast the communities uh, in communities where family school and community fail to offer constant trend and constructive goals the adolescent point towards the unwanted behaviors which means they are not happy with the things existing in their community or with their family so they tend to become more disordered and suspicious the society's expectations pose a challenge for adolescents and are valuable in helping them to progress along the path to the adulthood sense of uh, their self the adolescent can only construct a personal identity in the context of relationship with others uh, it involves respecting and responding properly uh, to their beliefs society in general has expectations about the adolescent group so they should behave uh, and these will often conflict with the adolescent's expectations so society so, so will expect it from the adolescent one thing and the adolescent will expect the uh, something strange from the uh, society or something opposite to the uh, society then hence the adolescent need to achieve individuation which produces a uh, conflict uh, change uh, challenge for the young person who is already struggling for personal identity and at the same time discovering new ways of squeezing into the society. So many of the tasks of adolescents involve strong social expectations, uh, like the accepting one's physique uh, and the sexual role. Okay, all these things comes in social challenges, accepting one's physical and sexual role, establishing new peer associations with both the sexes, achieving emotional autonomy of parents, selecting and preparing for a job. So they have to prepare for the family life, to, they want to get married. So they have to acquire a sense of social responsible behavior. So all these things are part of the social expectation and there they have to face a lot of challenges. Then we move on to the, uh, uh, so he, here also in social expectation or the social challenges also uh, they can have to face or there are some challenges due to the changes in the body image or parental expectation, etc. So there could be a lot of adolescent expectations as well. Then all these uh, are there, just read. Uh, the material and understand the same it's all repetition okay then the uh, we are moving to the next one that is the psychosocial challenges facing the adolescents so uh, we can tell that the adolescents due to the developmental crisis they are prone uh, to face a number of psychosocial challenges among the major challenges are the juvenile delinquency drug and alcohol abuse early pregnancy sexually transmitted diseases including hiv or aids so we have already spoken about all these things yesterday but this is also uh, now we are discussing it is a challenge so yesterday we were 
telling about the uh, significance of something that means the uh, what are the uh, normal issues that they have to face in this particular period but now we are making a detailed uh, explanation about this the psychosocial challenges and all these issues so juvenile delinquency you know what it is so it refers to the predisposition to and indulgence in criminal or unlawful activities by children under the age of 18 okay under the age of 18 so usually the children who are inclined to getting into the trouble during the adolescence are the ones that belong to hyperactive groups sometimes the dysfunctional family relationships and assist and lack of effective parenting skills may lead to this so also antisocial youth may be placed in uh, uh, groups of uh, pro-social peers influenced positively in the behavior so they are cultivating a sort of uh, uh, antisocial behavior due to various reasons okay maybe their lack of education or maybe the situation of the family the poverty so all these uh, things may lead to this juvenile delinquency now we move on to the next one that is drug and alcohol abuse we know that this is a very challenging period adolescents during that period they have the interest to experience the pleasure for that they use drug and alcohol uh, and they sometimes they will be addicted to the substances so it is one of the risky taking behavior uh, among adolescents we can tell then drugs are capable uh, of providing pleasure by giving relaxation all these are misconception okay so the getting some relaxation from the use of drugs they think that the prolonged heightened sensation they'll get then alcohol for example that is imagined to reduce anxiety so they think that so they're anxious for that uh, to avoid that anxiety they can consume some amount of alcohol that practice will make them to have more amount and slowly this will get addicted to the uh, drugs or even the alcohol abuse the needless to say drug and needle so needless to say drug and alcohol abuse stands as a high correlate in other risk behaviors like delinquency and this uh, promiscuity okay then teenage uh, pregnancy or the early pregnancy among adolescents so with their mounting idealism and capacity to reflect in more theoretical and imaginary ways the young adolescents may get caught up in a mental war, uh, world for, far from the reality so they are living in a world of uh, imagination or in a world of uh, uh, surprises or excitement so that will uh, cause lot of problems or challenges in their life then for an adolescent who has decided to be sexually involved pregnancy is a factor that one needs to think about so several adolescent girls and boys want to try out sex and they do not understand the meaning and value of this act without having proper knowledge of uh, this uh, sexual act or the value of this the purpose of the sexuality they want to know it they want to realize the pleasure they want to experience it as a pleasure uh, we know that sex education can impact a lot if we provide it in the schools especially for the teenagers but now i don't think that it's must uh, it's not possible due to the attitude of the uh, school or due to the uh, i don't know why it is not included uh, strictly included and involved in the study uh, curriculum some of the schools uh, they have the school counselors or the school social workers they are providing the sex education so it's very important that each and every adult and in their time they have to get the sex education to avoid the misconceptions and uh, their uh, ignorance about the sexual act and the, about the sexuality it is very precious and it is a very secret and it is very sacred that's what religious people tells about the sexuality then they misunderstand the holiness of sex and are eager to try it as early as possible so when they get a chance they're looking for a chance they misunderstand the holiness of sex and eager to try it as early as possible not only is it difficult to be a teen parent but most teen parents ending up being single parents so before getting married in the uh, 
young age that is in the after 18 years they will become if anyone will become pregnant in by before 18 so they their life will be very pathetic and they that will be ending up being single parents most of the cases so our society does not accept this lifestyle it's our culture that's 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 very uh, pure one our culture it has got a dignity and privilege uh, we can tell that uh, i have a very good culture but that's against the, such kind of practices will be totally against the uh, culture and the society does not accept such a lifestyle so having information about the contraceptives is not enough okay so that is also uh, not enough that to have premarital sex or premature sex that is totally against the uh, society, social lifestyle or the morality so we have to understand that so uh, the awareness of contraceptive is not enough that seems to predict whether or not the adolescents will use contraceptives is uh, their acceptance of themselves and their sexuality so that is the prevention is based on the beliefs that adolescents have the cognitive ability so there is the part of the important co uh, cognition that they should cultivate this attitude that they have got a cognitive ability to approach the problem solving uh, in a planned organized and analytical manner so they have to realize that that is not their priority in their age so they will get uh, they will get matured and they will become mature and then they can have the chance accepted by the family members or parents or by the society before if they do it that's not accepted and that's not right and that is not morally correct then sexually transmitted disease and hiv aids okay then the adolescents who are sexually active may be susceptible or exposed to the sexually transmitted diseases including hiv uh, aids so sex education by itself cannot solve the problem of teenage pregnancies or in the absence of a vaccine or a, uh, uh, what you call efficacious cure the prevention of the spread of hiv will uh, for many people require changes in the risk taking behavior so the behavior modification strategies uh, depend on an appro uh, appreciation of the complexities of social context, risk and relationship, as well as some inhibitions to discuss this sex and negotiating safer sex practices. So this includes a concern of self-efficacy uh, and a social support as sexual behavior is not essentially the product of uh, consensual and uh, sensible choice so they should have the knowledge and they have to uh, act according to the knowledge and they have to understand the things in the correct way so they should not go beyond the pleasure okay if they are going beyond the pleasure uh, to experience something out of excitement definitely that will end up with a lot of uh, problems and uh, they will lose their life the happiness in their life Okay, now we move to the next challenge that is moral and spiritual challenges. Are you all there? I think today very less number of students, only one or two, I don't know who are they. Okay, I think they are recording the session and they will give to the students if they need it. Okay, so we move on to the next uh, challenges that is moral and spiritual challenges. Uh, the moral development that we have to discuss here during the adolescence, the young person is challenged and tested uh, by a wide range of moral decisions. So during this stage, the adolescent learns to follow the society in which they live. So the aim for doing uh, well or avoiding wrong depend on the consent of all the people so it is good to accept the good and avoid the uh, bad things okay the wrong things so there is a stress on following with the law and order also during this stage the individual cultivates a sense of human rights and starts to increase integrity so additionally at this stage the adolescents develop clear ideas about what they believe in and what they are prepared to stand up for so the longer does the individual act merely out of fear or the need for approval so uh, they should be able to 
people act in a responsible way so the socially accepted things should be practiced and they have to act according to that so that will be helping to have a moral and uh, uh, spiritual uh, maturity among them so they will get a sense of morality uh, so whatever I do, so morality is nothing but it is the uh, a person's conviction to do only the right things and avoid the wrong things. Okay, so uh, they have to act according to that sense of morality. So in adolescence, the life experiences, the courts uh, and the rights may play a major part in the development of spiritual beliefs. So it's very difficult for the uh, adolescent group to make understand the value of spirituality, the importance of spiritual life. So they do not practice the beliefs. They do not follow the rituals to keep up their beliefs in that uh, uh, sense. Then this stage, the younger person is likely to recognize that other people might have different and equally valid ways of understanding and expressing their spirituality. So they have got the freedom that they think whether I should practice my uh, spirituality or not. So the, some adolescents find orthodox religious systems challenging and fickle with their need to achieve some uh, level of separation from their families, traditions, uh, and values. So those adolescents that are struggling with identity formation and are striving to find their place in the society may be attracted to unorthodox religious cults and practices in order to explore their spiritual beliefs and values. For some, uh, this creates a deeper sense of meaning of life and may become involved in religious practices. So they realize that uh, religious practices are very good for their becoming and they are fond of uh, attending the religious ceremonies and religious rituals with utmost respect and uh, they uh, want to be a part of the orthodox society so this may lead to the adolescent being marginalized okay so other challenges in adolescence okay so what are the other challenges that uh, we face uh, or the adolescent group may have to confront in their developmental time so at home so on the uh, home front the parents and adolescent experience difficulties in communicating uh, managing responsibility and being independent with the changing structure of today's family the countless youngsters are being raised by single parents step parents and even grandparents so the parents the parenthood should realize that okay so they have an important role in uh, molding and shaping of the personality and the life of the adolescents okay so issues such as adoption sibling rivalry and poverty affect a teen's relationship with the uh, family and relatives uh, adolescence is a right time in which to intervene into family manners uh, with the necessary when necessary for instance uh, whereas minor parent child uh, conflicts the parent child conflicts will be there in a minor form so for example regarding cause and privileges uh, they are normative in adolescence the major conflicts are less frequent thus when major conflicts occur often in a family the parents should be uh, concerned with that then the adolescents can be a uh, confusing time for the adolescent experiencing the phase of life for the parents who are nurturing the uh, adolescent during his or her progression through this period so and for the other adults the charge to with enhancing the development of youth during this period okay so there will be a sibling rival uh, rivalry that may be formed so that occurs when brothers and sisters fight with each other and do not get along well okay so we experienced might have experienced it in our daily life from our own family or from our neighborhood okay anyway so we know what could be the reasons and what would be the effect of all these things so often there is a certain amount of problems that arise out of one sibling being older than the other and being able to do more than the younger so in some family if you take you know uh, there will be a very closeness a very uh, loving uh, relationship among the siblings but 
in many of the families they suffer because of the sibling rivalry okay so the word rivalry involves the idea of a competition and that is what most sibling rivalry is so a competition between two siblings for their parents or other attention so they just want to get attended by the parents or some one should attend them so they are not ready to uh, uh, make the other one accepted by the other one so that may be a uh, sense of jealous and they fight because they want uh, parents attention and the parents usually may not have so much time attention and patience to give that's true now the parents are working and they do not have enough time to take care of their children so a lot of experiences uh, because of the giving up of the parents the attention uh, the uh, lack of care that they have to give during this time that will create that will impact very negatively in the uh, adolescent group so they fight because that they are jealous they fight over ordinary uh, teasing which is a way of testing the effects of behavior and words of one another person on another person they fight because they're growing up in a competitive society that uh, teaches them uh, that to win is to better so most of the parents want their children to win okay so they fight because uh, with a competitive spirit so they want to win they want to get uh, the higher attention than the other one by that attitude then schools related concerns are there schools related concerns schools has a significant impact on a teen's life and plays an important role in the building self-esteem and developing relationship with others some of the challenges that they face among this uh, period is uh, uh, student teacher conflicts the learning difficulties school failure and over and under achievement then among young adolescents there is a change in school setting typically involving transition from elementary school to the either uh, junior high school or even middle school that will uh, affect them then and in late the adolescents there is a transition from high school to the world of work university or child earning child rearing okay then the antisocial and delinquent behavior that is another challenge uh, antisocial and delinquent behavior is not eased uh, in the stage of adolescence so this include violence uh, thrill seeking behaviors gangs illegal sexual behaviors and homosexuality etc so because of their physical and mental growth the adolescents are no longer treated like children okay because of their physical and mental growth so they have to accept understand whether they are like the children or are they matured enough uh, as the adolescent so the expectations uh, adult and peers have of the change and their behavior changes one of the most obvious social changes in the beginning of serious interest and romantic interactions with the other team uh, other teens okay then they have to learn to handle the emotions and behavior that go along with these relationship so they also experience a change in how adults treat them and talk to them so it's very challenging then the other one the other challenge that we uh, see with the peer relationship the sense of belonging is there okay the adolescent is trying to find out how worthwhile he or she is in the eyes of peer only the peer can I tell that how the other one is precious to him how what could be the worth of that person's life having friends means that he has been accepted simple meaning having friends means no, i am accepted by others they spend more time with peers because they have similar taste in uh, all the uh, uh, aptitudes like uh, the music dress activities dreams and goals the teens will uh, look to their peers for norms in dress, uh, drugs, alcohol, and sexual behaviors. So having the wrong type of friends can be worse than having no friends at all. So it is a good thing to remember that having the wrong type of friends can be worse than having no friends at all. Having the wrong type of friends uh, is uh, or can be worse than no friends at all so it is good to have no friends but if we have bad friends that will be a problem 
the parents need to know where their children are going with their friends they should know they should have a control on their teens the peers play an important role in forming the lifestyle of an adolescent they decide what the individual will become as they mature into adulthood the both positive and the development and the negative development can be uh, contributed by peers the parents need to look into the kind of friends that the adolescents choose uh, everything the parents should have uh, an uh, additional time to spend to control all these things and to know all these things about their teen children then privacy so they are fond of the adolescent group they are very much fond of having privacy they have uh, their own they need their own room their own objects to use uh, in every aspects they like to have a privacy but to up, up to some extent that's true that's good but up to some extent it's very 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 bad because they will get isolated by uh, their own activities and privacy okay so that should not be allowed okay then we move on to the emotional disorders emotional uh, disorders uh, that's a major emotional problem that experienced by the teenagers during uh, among the teenagers we can see a number of emotional disorders uh, the seriousness of these problems has to be evaluated and professional help should be provided if necessary so the childhood trauma the depressive disorders anxiety disorders then ocd you know what ocd it's obsessive compulsive disorder and post traumatic stress disorder and some of the problem that are seen in the adolescents there some sort of uh, disorders will be there like this then uh, developmental disorders adolescent who in their childhood suffered mental retardation learning disorders language and speech disorders then pervasive developmental disorders uh, some sort of asperger's disorders that continue to experience in the difficulties of these disorders so at this stage they have to face loads of difficulties and problems compared to peers who are normal so this adds an extra burden to the parents and siblings of the adolescents then physical disability is there so a significant number of adolescents are physically challenged they do face the problem of adjusting themselves with the normal peer group in school and society and with the siblings and the relatives in the family front they need to be uh, dealt with empathy and appropriate care so they have to get proper empathy and appropriate care so the physical disability in no way can interfere with any normal function of an individual okay the adolescent with chronic illness there may be uh, the influence of some chronic illness the family is living with an adolescent who has a chronic illness such as diabetes seizure uh, disorders seizure disorders or even cancer or other life threatening diseases then experiencing uh, some special form of challenges the families need to take extra care to cope with these special health concerns then disruptive uh, behavioral disorders are there so disturbed behaviors uh, indicate a considerable degree of internal upset or represent a symptom of a larger underlying emotional problems the problems in school attention deficit uh, then hyperactive disorder then conduct disorder and opposition uh, defiant disorders are some of the common among the disorders behavioral disorders then psychotic disorders are there psychotic disorders also referred as the major mental disorders seriously impair in adolescents ability to uh, function in their with the reality so some of the sicknesses associated with the psychotic uh, disorders are schizophrenia so what do you mean by schizophrenia so in that schizophrenia the person is losing uh, the reality so he did not have the uh, contact with the reality he is in his own world and uh, some uh, then due to the uh, psychosis due to the mood disorders then brief reactive psychosis or toxic psychosis are there then eating and nutritional disorders also could be considered as uh, a challenge in adolescent period so the lifestyle 
that is a major thing that we have to focus that have changed the food habits of adolescents need to be taken into notice so eating disorders uh, is seen in many stages of their life but teenager they have got the prevalence in the uh, with this disorder and eating disorder does not use food in healthy ways to satisfy hunger uh, the eating disorders are anorexia nervosa bulimia nervosa or binge eating all these are the types of eating disorders this can lead to uh, various consequences okay then sleep disorders the sleep problems may be uh, signal only mind passing problems uh, they may also represent more persistent troublesome ones so uh, some of the most common sleep problems that the adolescents face uh, include uh, narcolepsy that is narcolepsy that is intense desire to sleep or insomnia okay no sleeps at all then uh, uh, circadian rhythm sleep disorder that is a delayed sleep phase could be there the nightmares sleep walking somnambulism etc okay then suicide and among uh, suicide and adolescents uh, now they have uh, almost uh, it's a misconception or the last solution of the problem that they see most of the teenagers uh, see that means uh, suicide okay that is suicide so they see suicide as the way to escape from the challenges or the uh, what you call the failure okay so suicide is the third leading cause of death for adolescents from 15 to 19 years old the third leading cause it's very 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 frightening information and there are various reasons behind an adolescent committing suicide so some of the reasons could be they are at the age where they cannot take any elevated emotions uh, whether it is positive or negative emotions other than normal expressions of feelings will disturb them and the first thing they think of their think of after this will be about ending their life so they lose the hope that's why they end their life they do not understand the value of life Okay. and that suicide is not an answer to any of the problem some of the other causes of for committing suicide are problems in the family uh, like alcoholism of the father or divorce uh, single parenting poverty love failure that's another reason for suicide then academic failure that's also there a low emotional instability that leads to suicide so a lot of reasons are there then there could be a generation gap or adolescent and generation gap so the generation gap means the difference of opinions the interest and attitudes in the people of two age groups that's the generation gap then the generation gap also increases as a result of a greater educational social and cultural changes experienced by the adolescents in contrast to their parents so this is very explicit you know we know that the generation gap how oh, the how it is very much presentable in the uh, age group of youngsters then though it's a very temporary phase uh, uh, from the mid adolescence family relationship begins to improve because parents siblings grandparents recognize uh, the adolescent the teen as an adult or near adult okay so everything is justified whatever they do or whatever questions they face they answer through the term that is generation gap okay these are some other challenges that comes in the adolescence development period so now we want to the guidance and counseling for adolescents so our area that means we have got the information what is adolescent what are the problems what are the challenges etc 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 now we are going to act we are going to practice what we have to do how we can help the adolescents to avoid all these challenges and all so uh, the guidance and counseling for adolescents uh, includes a lot of things the school counselors play an important role in that okay so adolescents we know that we were telling that it's a phase which makes a person enters into the adult world so growing to an adult a child 
makes us experience the problem in various domains what are the domains like the personal social and educational then even vocational and career related so here the school counselors they have to play a very big role important role so they are uniquely qualified to address the developmental needs of all students uh, through a comprehensive school, school counseling so that should help them their uh, holistic development the becoming of the students so there will be a lot of school counseling program addressing the academic career and personal social development of all students the professional school counselors develop confidential relationships with the students to help them to resolve to cope with their problems and developmental concerns to a certain extent to certain limit the school counselors implement the counseling program by providing academic skill support then organizational study and test taking skills career planning education in understanding uh, self and others the coping strategies peer relationships and effective uh, social skills communication problem solving decision making conflict resolution uh, and the study skills career awareness substance abuse education uh, multicultural diversity awareness all these things are uh, taken care of by the school counselor so in spite of all this the social workers who are working with the adolescents also should exhibit adequate understanding and should be uh, thoughtful of adolescent development uh, their growth uh, which may include human growth and behavior including development of stages educating the family members uh, the significant adolescents uh, steps in instituting a self constituting a self which may include a natural form of rebelliousness and rejection of authority so they should also show uh, their knowledge and misunderstanding of the concept of family that is the concept of family culture including the role of family in meeting the changing physical mental spiritual and emotional needs of the adolescents so the social workers should respect uh, and understand the needs of the adolescents as well and uh, for these resources the cooperation uh, and cooperation among the professionals and other agencies has to be considered so at the same time they must also maintain adequate safeguards for privacy uh, and confidentiality in their relationship with the youth or the younger people so the role of the child adolescent psychiatrists uh, psychology social workers and other professionals and individual uh, psychotherapy medication then family and group therapy and other type of treatment would be that would be very much helpful and through that we have to help them come out of the disorders that the adolescents are facing so the direction and assistance to help the parents to understand what is involved in seeking the help to help the adolescent is very important so what mental health intervention can reasonably be expected to accomplish and how uh, to find the right uh, clinician or the practitioner to the teen and the family is very important okay then we move on to the next unit that is the unit four uh, the role and functions of teachers parents and significant others in the development of the development of adolescents there are the what are the basics of parenting and parenting styles the purposive activities aimed at uh, ensuring the survival and development of children that could be the role of the parenting uh, the parenting style referred to the combination of rearing and personal qualities of an individual parent so there are total uh, kinds of parenting right authoritarian parenting is there authoritative parenting is there neglectful parenting is there indulgent parenting is there what do you mean by authoritarian parenting so it is nothing but uh, they, this is very restrictive punitive style so in which the parents uh, exhorts the adolescents to follow the parents directions so they want to uh, they are very uh, much uh, strong enough to uh, tell that okay the adults and their children should follow their own commands okay their own directions they have to respect the uh, work and the effort of the uh, what the parent is insisting so 
firm limits and controls are uh, placed on the adolescent and little verbal exchange is allowed. So this style is associated with the adolescent's socially incompetent behavior. So that is the result. Then authoritative parenting. So authoritative parenting, this style encourage adolescents to be independent, but still places limits and controls on their actions so they give independence but still they have some sort of control or they have know where to limit it and where to control on the actions so extensive verbal uh, give and take is allowed and parents are warm and nurturing towards the adolescent children so this style is associated with the adolescents socially competent behavior okay then neglectful parenting so a style in which the parent is very uninvolved in the becoming or the adolescent's life. So it is associated with adolescent social incompetence, especially lack of self-control. Then intelligent parenting. So this is a style in which uh, the parents are highly involved with their adolescent's group, but place few demands or control on them. So this is associated with the adolescent's social incompetence, especially a lack of self-control. So researchers have found a lot of uh, 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 authoritative parenting to be related to the positive aspects of development. Uh, there of course a lot of merits in authoritative parenting. So we have to think if there are any parents listening in the class, they have to think uh, to which category they belong to and what changes they have to make if they belong to some other uh, negative char uh, characteristics. Okay, then a role of parents in the life and development of adolescents. Uh, we know that they could be the model. Okay, the parent should be the model of their socialization. The parent could be the model uh, of their exchange of love. So they are the first teachers. They are the first goal, ever seenable goal for the adolescent. So uh, the theory tells that the children will learn specific social behaviors from their parents. Okay, they such as how to provide emotional support, how to gain compliances from others, or manage conflict. Parents should teach them the way uh, the characteristics of the parent should teach them how to. They have to uh, see the parents as the models, okay, the heroes. Okay, so the theory further proposes uh, that children and adolescents will employ these behaviors in relationship with their friends. Uh, thus, adolescents uh, emulate the social style of their parents, which can range from warm, supportive, or involved to hostile, coercive, or uh, contemptuous. Okay, so here, the parents as the model of socialization, the parental influence on identity. That is also important, parental influence on identity. So we know that uh, everybody is equipped with uh, or possessed with some sort of ego identity and identity diffusion. So that refers to these eco-social crises uh, occurring in late adolescence. So Erickson, the famous ecologist and counselor, he tells that he, according to his view, this phase of life cycle as a time of growing and occupational and ideological commitment. So adolescence is the period of the attainment of a certain psychosocial position, the formation uh, The formation of an identity. So identity is the internal construction or organization of drives, ideology, abilities, beliefs, and self-perception, which makes individual unique from others and help, and it help uh, them to make their way in the world. So they are making a particular position, a good position in the world by all these characteristics. Then the parental influence on this identity is very important. So they have to uh, insist the uh, adolescent child to uh, cultivate a good uh, sense of identity and that identity should be appreciated and that identity should be uh, well accepted by the social system. Then the parental influence on the gender development of adolescents uh, uh, that also have a different achievement expectations for their adolescent sons and daughters, especially in academic areas such as Max and Science. So here, yeah. so they are giving uh, their influence 
uh, in the gender development of the adolescents, uh, the family with the young adolescent daughters, they indicate that they experience more intense conflict about sex, choice of friends, and uh, curfew than do families with young adolescent sons. The parents can impart better gender awareness, sex education, and help them to practice mutual respect within the family itself. Okay, so there should be uh, equal, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, respect and regard should be given to the freedom should be given to the uh, both uh, adolescent daughter or the son in the family there should not be any uh, discrimination or any sense of impartiality uh, conveyed to the uh, children then the role of peers they have got a significant role those adolescents learn how to interact with others through their peer, peer groups then the peer group provides setting within which the adolescents can establish and clarify their moral standards and value system. The peer group can offer emotional support at the time of stress. The peer group serves an uh, instructing and advising function. So uh, only the peers can influence a lot in this time period. So. These are the way that the, the or these are the roles of peers to help the adolescent group to get developed. Then role of teachers, obviously they have to uh, equip the adolescent people to have a proper emotional development, then proper social relationship, then proper level of aspiration. They have to check the unhealthy competition, so they should encourage the self-discipline, provide sex education, it's very important, and provide proper guidance service, then adopt efficient teaching methodology. So these are the roles of a teachers in the development of an adolescent. So with that, that block is over, okay? The infancy and adolescence, that's over. So have you got any doubts? about this particular units or particular block you can ask me so we have got a lot of experiences still uh, with these concepts but due to lack of time and due to the uh... okay so we move on to the next block that is adulthood so i cannot share the slides since it is in my laptop okay so i will send it later don't worry so let's have a discussion about the uh, units so we have got four units in this block the unit one is establishing family during adulthood career marriage and family parenting skills uh, role of adults in society so i think we do not need much of explanations about this particular area because we all almost many of us will be in this group so but what other things could be done to make those who are having a problem that is the thing a social worker in that social worker context we have to focus so anyway uh, scientifically the scientific explanations or the biological explanation about this particular group is essential for us to have a proper understanding about what we are now okay so this uh, adulthood uh, uh, one second yeah so we move on to the first unit that is uh, establishing family during adulthood. So adulthood can be classified into early adulthood, middle adulthood and late adulthood. So this is considered as a period of uh, uh, many, many transitions. So the child so far becomes an individual, becomes independent and creates a path for his or her own life. So it is in this period one starts the process of selecting a mate and entering into the family life in the adulthood one is entering into the family life so entering into the family life or the establishment of a family life in adulthood needs a lot of skill so it's not a easy task we know that okay so we need a lot of skill it must go through various phases and tasks such as finding a mate very important but our uh, in the childhood itself everybody will be having an interest or a taste of what kind of a purse mate should be there to uh, share their life so they're having very much focus so they're not bothering about much about their career or even the money but they have got a sense of selecting a mate to how to get married etc 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 okay so 
uh, separation from the parents and family where one has grown up then all these things are happening there then early adulthood we can discuss it uh, there is a person called Betty Catter and Monica Michael. They are the writers or even the uh, counselors. So they discusses the characteristics, features of adulthood as follows. As young adults, men and women during this developmental phase develop the ability to base on the relational foundations laid throughout all of infancy and childhood to form and engage in emotionally mature intimate relationship. So throughout this phase of life, they continue to master their abilities to negotiate the complexities of marriage, family, and uh, intimate relationship. So the younger adults learn to nurture themselves as well as the emotional and physical needs of their friends and family. At this phase, they learn to steer the course of interdependence, mutuality, and reciprocity in relationships and open uh, themselves to uh, themselves up to those they trust. So the adult here they develop cognitive, emotional, and uh, relational mastery at the phase of uh, life uh, what do you mean by cognitive mastery so it is uh, the thought becomes more adaptable and flexible in order to accommodate for life's inconsistencies cognition is applied to set career and family goals so, so thinking about it okay the rational way so emotional mastery in the sense of identity is based largely on young adults careers okay the career is the main focus uh, then relational mastery that forming intimate relationship with others dominates couples may marry or uh, cohabitate then child bearing uh, typically begins change associated with the careers marriage and parenting are stressful ability to form uh, lasting intimate relationship highly dependent upon the emotional bonds formed in the early uh, years of life then we move on to the next topic that is adulthood adult and family development so human development occurs within the context of family we know that okay there is no doubt in that so individuals lives are interviewing uh, in the trend uh, with the families so it is useful therefore to consider individual development uh, and family development simultaneously so uh, it has got a balance in the uh, to play a role then focusing upon the intersection of individual time family time and historical time uh, change occurs at three different levels the developing individual uh, dyadic relationship with the family uh, and the institution of the family so the dyadic, dyadic uh, uh, relationship within the family that is the parent and child or even with the siblings typically last across multiple decades and provide uh, horizontal and vertical engages in the family system so change in individual family members that involving personality and the family roles are connected to their own and with their own relatives aging process then male select may sorry mate selection and uh, pathways to commitment mate selection and pathway to commitment mm. so individuals use a filtering mechanism okay that helps them to sort out a potential mate according to their interest, according to their ability to convey the, communicate uh, according to the, uh, according to their uh, beauty, sense of beauty, all these things uh, play a vital role in the selection of mate. So uh, here the propinquity refers to the uh, ge uh, geographic closeness the chances of maintaining relationship in a close geographical situation is better than long distance relationship. Then social filter that marriage uh, takes place between person who share something in common. The homogamy refers to the partnering with someone who is similar in religious background, age, education, political ideology, socioeconomic status, values and beliefs, etc. Then the other thing is physical attraction, which refers the person's ideal of physical attractiveness in this. Uh, mate influences the mate selection process. Okay, and 
and sheet filter. So this refers to the reciprocity, a reciprocal commitment to the relationship in order to finalize the selection. Then relationship development, how the relationship is getting developed. The couples in marriage move beyond the initial physical attraction and form committed uh, relationship. So this could be understood using two models like the NAPS relationships and escalation model. That's uh, some psychological explanations uh, that you have to read. So that we, do, we are going to do nothing with this, but we can just get some information apart from the uh, theoretical perspective. Okay, then we discuss marriage. So marriage is one of the important thing that's happening in uh, adulthood. So many anthropologists, they suggest or they comment that uh, marriage is not only an event that, you need, uh, that unites two people and their families in a relationship with a variety of mutual obligations. It is also the event that marks the attainment of adult status. Although traditional cultures uh, that ascribe the significance to marriage may also recognize qualities that must be developed for a person to become an adult. So it is marriage that is uh, explicitly the crowning event of the transition to adulthood. Okay, so that will help us to have a transition, this uh, particular marriage. Then the reasons for marriage, why people getting married? What are the reasons? Tell me, what are the reasons for marriage? Why people are getting married? A hmm? lot of reasons will be there. Please, please do comment. What are the reasons of marriage? Almost, I think that many of married students are there. Can anyone suggest some points? Why did you get married? Or what are the reasons of marriage? There could be loads of reasons. <laughs> yeah, tell me one or two. Some interesting, yeah. apart from the text, See, we can uh, get some interesting. See, uh, yeah. everyone, needs, everyone needs a companion. A life exactly, partner. companionship. Share the journey with. Uh, we've yeah. already spoken about uh, sexual desires as well. Yeah, to satisfy the sexual pleasure, that is one person has messaged it, one student has messaged it. It's not only the sexual pleasure, more than that is a sexual partnership. Okay, we can make the term in that way. Uh, what else? And, uh, some, you know, uh, norms of the society and um, mm. that's, you know, how, how, how the world goes on. And uh, somewhat people follow 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 the style, or you know, uh, the yeah. family tradition in each and every. So it could be different reasons for. It. Yeah. So uh, some uh, basic reasons that we have some pure reasons. Okay, basic reasons, and uh, uh, from the social context, we can tell that companionship. For companionship, there should be someone to accompany the person in his uh, traveling. Okay, to share, to care, to advise. Uh, to love okay so that that's the second reason that's love and intimacy so only the married couple can experience that love and intimacy than any other relationship so they can exchange their love they can exchange their intimacy to a great extent okay so the priority when the priority changes you know uh, we know that it's a relationship so the relationship varies overall uh, in all through the life the relationship varies right so when a person is getting married so the first priority could be the mother or the father or the wife it's a confusing question who could be the priority can can you repeat the question once yeah if a one get married so his priority changes right priority in relationship that changes so when he one person gets married his priority could be his wife or the father or the mother the priority should be wife because sorry the priority uh, should be wife but things yeah. has to be balanced out the priority uh, has exactly. to be exactly Exactly, because when the relationship changes, the priorities also changes, but at the same time, we have to maintain the relationship uh, with the others as same as we have. 
that is very important and that is the wisdom okay so here the companionship love and intimacy the supportive partnership that could be the other reason supportive partnership so there sh should be someone to support in each and every aspects of the life for that then sexual partnership that is morally accepted one okay so uh, a country like india we are very much uh, strengthened with our culture our morality our systems our values etc okay so being in that uh, being touched with that definitely we have to have a sexual partner only one sexual partner so the marriage is the provision for our uh, sexual life okay so sexual reproduction etc so sexual partnership is very important that's the reason then sharing parenthood people are getting married to share their parenthood because the duty the religious people tells that okay they come and according to the religion marriage is nothing but it's for to continue the procreation okay by given by the creator so sharing parenthood that is there then family or social pressure for that the family members are uh, pressuring me so i have heard uh, many of the youngsters they commented that i got married because of the family pressure or the social pressure okay actually i did not have any thought of getting married but the family due to my family i got married or the social pressure made me to marry so there are okay then economic security okay not to possess the wealth but to have uh, an economic security people are getting married we know that the important thing uh, the issue that we face uh, not the male uh, uh, or the females or the women faces a lot of issues regarding this the male is getting economically secured when he, he marries a woman right there are a lot of issues being that dowry a big problem the death due to dowry or the uh, domestic violence are there okay so uh, how many of you can comment about the uh, issue of giving dowry what's your comment because there were a lot of people were commenting about it lot of uh, controversies and even the judiciary also play a vital role in that dowry it's a social evil very good then any other comments not in favor yeah not in favor give your suggestions on that because a lot of interesting things will be coming out from your mouth when we speak about giving dowry or getting dowry represents low self esteem of being parents of course so it's like a social status well i you know what what i believe is you know instead mm. of taking dowry you know uh, do something good in your life earn it so you can yeah. respect yourself rather than expecting it from you know someone else someone else mm. is already giving you uh, uh, you know uh, mm. you know the kid uh, you know uh, not even knowing you all right uh, that yeah. well so you know just respect that and whatever you need ready work hard for it and get it simple why do you expect it to come uh, through someone else uh, that's my that's my simple logic okay so how the reason this is uh, economic security is one of the reasons to get married how is it possible without getting a gift from the wife or without having the getting the dowry how is it possible what are the ways to attain this economic security through marriage so if both the couple they work yes 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 that's what i was yeah. trying to say yeah what well, they have to earn the money for their livelihood to take care of their children okay for that so in most of the families uh, the woman has got a domestic role right they are not sending for the work but that has been changed a lot in the present scenario we can see that uh, both the couple both the Uh, husband and wife they are going for their work they are earning equally for the family so in that sense they are securing their family and they are taking care of the uh, children as well 
so we have to earn by work and we have to uh, make a balance in the work life as well as the family life so then will be things will be okay and we can have a uh, balanced good life okay so that if we uh, start to talk about this issue it will not stop and i am just uh, getting to the other one so conditions for a successful marriage lot of conditions will be there so individual both individuals are independent and mature so in that case both individuals are independent and mature then they can have a good uh, successful marriage then both individuals love not only each other but themselves another point the both individuals are uh, established in their work or occupation both individuals enjoy being alone as well as together both individuals know themselves both individuals can express themselves assertively both individuals are friends as well as lovers okay so these are some of the important conditions for a successful marriage then there are a lot of stresses in marriage you know that work work pressure that could be a stressor in marriage life successful marriage life then family issues uh, what could be the family issues the common family issues that we face tell some of the family issues interesting family issues that disturbs the peace of the family lack of coordination problem with in-laws satisfying the egos of all ego the clashes yeah. then lack of time okay because of the work pressure they are not getting enough time to spend with the family and take care of the uh, companion or to the children good then misunderstanding infidelity some sort of extra marital issues affairs from both the husband and wife difference of opinions very good so there are a lot of family issues then poverty okay that's uh, connected to the financial issues poverty over expectations very good over expectations okay then these are the some of the family issues that we face then financial issues will be there so when there is uh, uh, not having a stable financial support or a base there will be unexpected expenses will be there in the form of uh, what you call illness hospital treatment etc or the death of some uh, one who is the breadwinner of the family a lot of issues will be there then intra family issues illness issues etc these are the stresses that can uh, create a lot of problems among the family members okay then what are the resources that we use the resources good conflict resolution skills that could be a resource in marriage good financial management another resource that we have to practice or that we have to uphold for marriage then good communication that's very important good communication clear communication then like partners personality that's very important then shared leisure activities so always we have to find some time to communicate to a, or to communicate with everyone in the family especially with the companion uh, then uh, we have to find some time for our leisure activities so that will make the both the husband and wife and the children very happy then good health practices okay so for that we have to so now we can see uh, a trend that uh, uh, instead of cooking they are ordering things swiggy zomato all these things because due to their uh, work pressure or the lack of time most of the couple or the most of the family they are ordering things okay so instead of which we have to have a good health practices so both of the husband and wife find some time their weekends to cook together and uh, according to their interest okay so all these things can uh, considered as resources and uh, the types of marital relationship that is the next topic that we have to discuss 
types of marital relationship so the uh, others they have described the six relationship between men and women that is based mostly on uh, experience with the couple in the therapy so in the uh, in that context they have made uh, uh, six types of marital relationship a mother and son that's a nurturing relationship is made up of a male who marries to be uh, taken care of and a woman who do not who not only mothers her children but her husband as well okay so a mother and son that could be uh, one type of marriage so she may feel inadequate but she runs the household then a daddy and doll all these are some sort of therapeutical term okay uh, don't mistake it okay daddy and doll that's another type so here the supporting relationship is one in which a serious able materialistic male acquires an attractive mate and enjoys her as short as a short thing okay so she may flirt and get a lot of attention from other men but in general she is not interested in them okay it's a kind of showing things okay then a bitch and nice guy a bitch and nice guy so challenging relationship is an uh, this kind of attitude is challenging relationship is an ongoing conflict with one partner complaining and the other refusing to get involved and thus appearing to be a nice guy while he suddenly puts down his nagging wife okay something strange then a master and a slave that's a type of marriage where controlling relationship is the traditional dominating male and female dedic are dedicated to serving the male so here the domination the uh, female is dedicated to serve the male and to obey the orders of the male then the next one is a confronting relationship between two competitive that's hawks in inverted comma we can tell it's hawks he is going to be stressful both are trying to prove their supremacy both are afraid of not being loved or of being heard the anger hides the pain there in this particular relationship then the next one is an overly accommodating relationship that is between two doves uh, who pretend to be lovely lovey dovey instead of uh, expressing the hurt and anger they really feel these are some of the terms uh, the types based on the therapeutical terms okay then there is we have to uh, focus on the intimacy and commitment in the marital relationship we know that marriage is a long term relationship right it's a long term relationship that has to be rooted strongly in the beginning years okay so uh, we know that uh, there the lovers are getting married in the first few days or even the few weeks or even the few months very 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 envious life they are living that means uh, others should jealous of them because the way that they love each other but when that intensity get is getting low okay they will start to quarrel each other they will start to scold among themselves so they will start to blame themselves due to the marriage etc etc it's happening okay so it should not happen so it's a long term relationship that has to be rooted strongly in the beginning years so the development of intimacy so they lack the intimacy over years but there are a uh, number of couple they are still keeping that intimacy as they had during their first days of their marriages Uh, sorry marriage so development of intimacy and commitment in the relationship is essential for establishing the marriage in the early years uh, that's very important so uh, edward burry he has described eight components of intimacy first one is uh, the conflict resolution that's one component the conflict resolution refers to the established patterns of resolving conflicts in a uh, marital relationship so the ability to manage the conflicts that is happening in the marital relationship then this is also includes the methods of resolving differences of opinion so there will be a lot of difference of opinion so we have to resolve it we should have the capability to resolve the uh, differences of opinion that high level of intimacy is an outcome of effective conflict resolution so the intimacy should be there if we are uh, intellectually uh, finding or the resolution for the conflicts that uh, is happening in the family the second 
component of intimacy is affection. So we have to show that affection. Intimacy among the couple is developed out of how they express affection and they show their feelings of emotional closeness, how far they are emotionally closed. Okay, so this will determine the uh, degree to which the partner's self disclose and the degree to which uh, each uh, reciprocates by sharing of feelings and emotions. The next uh, component in intimacy of intimacy is cohesion. So the shared feeling of oneness in a relationship is developed among the couple. That is cohesion. So the this determines how much they value relationship and mutuality of the commitment in relationship. So this is essential for fostering uh, the trust in the relationship. The next one is sexuality. The sexual relationship in a marriage fulfills the needs, wants and desires of both the partners. Okay, so uh, there is a, a lot of misconception on this and uh, uh, there are some people they think that they're getting married just for sexual pleasure alone. That's not at all correct, that is not at all moral, that is not at all uh, what you call ethical. Okay, so it's a, a part of life. This aspect of intimacy is considered to be the most intense togetherness a couple can experience. Sexuality in marriage is for the procreation. It is not only for exchanging the pleasures, but for the continuing the creation. So identity, that is the next uh, component of uh, intimacy. The couple becomes successful in a relationship by maintaining their own identity in the marital relationship. Each person is unique and both of them have got their identity. Okay, it's not the husband only having the identity, but the wife as well. Okay, so the personal identity is not lost in the identity of a couple. The next component is the compatibility. Compatibility. So this factor talks about how partners are related to each other, work together and play together. When intimacy exists, couples have a sense of comfort uh, when they are together, okay? And they mutually fulfill each other's needs. So they're ready to see the, meet the needs, okay? So they're very much conscious about others' need as well. Then expressiveness, that is another component. Uh, the degree to which partners allow each other to know their most personal thoughts the beliefs and feelings are strong indicators of the intimacy the beliefs and feelings that has to be communicated very clearly then autonomy independence from person's family of origin provides to emotional freedom a person uh, needs to develop nurture and sustain intimacy with the partner then barriers to establishing intimacy there could be some points like fear of intimacy is considered to be the primary barrier in establishing the relationship. They are having a fear of intimacy. So whether I'm um, having a, a good uh, intention or whether I'm strong enough to continue with this intimacy, such kind of confusions that can co that lead to certain amount of fear Okay, uh, that could be existing in the life. So a fear of failure of establishing a relationship, a fear of failure, okay, so they might have experienced some failures in establishing a relationship that will repeat or not, such kind of anxiety will be there. Then fear of being vulnerable to emotional hurt and pain, that's also from the experiences they might have uh, realized it, but the if you have the fear existing uh, of being vulnerable to emotional hurt and pain, you cannot have a good establishing of uh, intimacy then fear of rejection and lacking a reciprocal relationship then fear of losing identity fear of sex then fear of losing someone in love fear to take risk fear to accept the responsibility of an intimate relationship fear of experiencing anger or hostility in the relationship then fear of abandonment, fear of being found out, the real person inside. So fear to take the risk. Okay, all these are the barriers of intimacy. Then development of love in marriage. Okay, so most of the people do not know the meaning of love. Okay, but still they are getting married and they are having partners. So this uh, uh, 
particular topic will can enlighten many people and we have to know the what the development of love in marriage and how uh, it can make us a successful person in our family life okay so aira rees the famous writer described love as a developmental process a process that unfolds over time he proposed the wheel theory of love with the four stages rapo self revelation mutual dependency and personality need fulfillment so some theoretical background is very much important for us to know what the real love is okay so here rapport okay rapport the first way connection or bond we feel toward another person say so connection or a bond we feel towards the another person so rapport is easily established with persons so we have to i have been telling uh, that uh, rapport is the first and foremost quality for a good relationship so we have to build a rapport to get into a relationship but in marriage uh, or even this intimacy definitely we need uh, a sense of rapport that the first way connection or bond that we feel towards the other person the rapport is easily established with the persons who shares commonalities in cultural backgrounds okay people are from various culture but still within that cultural background they have got a commonality the commonality is getting shared with this rapo building the social class is there religious beliefs education background etc is there so it is believed that the people are more comfortable with someone who is more like them that's true right so i am very much comfortable with uh, a person who likes me a lot that's true the second uh, stage to have to de- develop the love in marriage is the self revelation okay self revelation that is personal hopes dreams fears and goals are disclosed to the other person when we feel comfortable with the other person that self revelation we are uh, ready to reveal ourselves with the comfortable person then mutual dependency that is the next one the intimacy depends in the couple upon self revelation and they start enjoying time together sharing activities pursuing shared interests they start relying on one another a sense of trust a sense of bond is uh, seen there then the personality need fulfillment refers to an established pattern of mutual exchanges of the support the sympathy and decision making so each person satisfies partner's deeper needs uh, as emotional needs and sexual needs so uh, that is also another area then the rapport personality need full self revelation mutual dependency all these things are in given as a figure in the course material please do read it then commitment we have to talk about commitment here commitment is discussed as the growth of commitment in a relationship is the result of three factors so there could be three factors that will influence in the growth of commitment in a relationship so growing satisfaction uh uh with each other's ability to meet and gratify the important needs the decreasing reliance on friends and family to meet needs that members of a couple provide each other then increasing investments in the relationship such as time material resources emotional or personal investment etc all these factors can uh, contribute the growth of commitment then family life cycle so there are uh, eight stages in a family life cycle first one is married couple without children first stage then child bearing families oldest child from birth to 30 months then the third stage is families with preschool children oldest child 2.5 years to 6 years then fourth one families with school children that is oldest child 6 years to 13 years families with teenagers they are the oldest child is 13 to 20 years then families with launching young adults from first to last child leaving home then seventh stage is middle aged parents the empty nest to retirement then aging family members that is 
and to death of both spouses. So we can understand the lives or the stages of family life uh, life cycle. So families are considered to be expanding until the first child leaves home and start contracting as in the later stages of the family life cycle. So the stages of this family life cycle include leaving home and becoming a single adult, uh, the joining of families through marriage, the new couple will be there, and becoming parents and a family with children, the family with adolescents, the family at midlife, and the family in later life. So you have to read the uh, material carefully. So additional explanations are given lot of explanation is given for each point just go and read and understand if we go through that definitely we cannot complete the portions on time then we move on to the next point that is the developmental task of the establishment phase developmental task of the establishment phase uh, to discuss that <coughs> We know that at the time of the marriage, the husband is attempting to achieve his developmental task as a young adult male. So while the wife is uh, currently working out her growth responsibilities as a young adult female. So the young man and the young woman must learn what it means to be a young adult with the young adult responsibilities in his or her home and community. Okay, so here the husband must learn what is expected of him as an husband and what it means to be a married man. So simultaneously, the young wife is learning what it means to be a wife, a young married woman, both in her home and in the community. So sometimes the developmental task of uh, husband and wife complement and mutually support each other. At other times, uh, the efforts of one conflict with those of the other. So this is the nature of the dynamic interaction into the marriage and family living. So the distinction should be uh, made between the conflict of a developmental task of the husband and wife and conflict arising out of the couple's difficulties in accomplishing the task, the task. So there are some complementary and some conflicting aspects uh, in many of the developmental tasks of the husband and wife. So when two people are drawn together in a mutually supportive ways as they work on their individual developmental tasks, those tasks are complementary. They are uh, seen as complementary. When they work through their task as husband and wife tend to pull the couple in opposite directions that the tasks are conflicting so then there is a chance of conflict so the difference is the lines of force in the pull towards or away from the other so in conflicting developmental tasks the lines of force between the pair oppose and they have to repelling some sort of uh, problem will be there then the different task of the first phase of marriage how this uh, we can discuss the what are the different tasks of the first phase of marriage uh, first one is establishing a home base to call their own so they want to uh, create establish a home as their own okay then second one is establishing mutually satisfactory uh, systems for getting and spending money hmm? So that is also another type of establishment, the important task they have to perform in this uh, early phase of their marriage, that is establishing mutually satisfactory systems for getting and spending money. The third task is to establish mutually acceptable patterns of who does what and who is accountable to who. So, it's a uh, they are fixing a clarity of what could be done by one and what the other has to do they are establishing mutually acceptable pattern of who does what and who is accountable to what accountable is responsible so when a person is doing a task he or she should be uh, having the responsibility on that then establishing a continuity of mutually satisfying sex relationship 
that's also very important establishing a continuity of mutually satisfying sex uh, relationship there could not be any domination okay usually male domination could be seen in the uh, satisfying the sexual relationship as well so when we do the counseling and when we uh, listen the uh, clients when they come uh, pathetic miserable or uh, very sad things were disclosed from on this aspect of okay, the sexual relationship uh, we know that okay so i don't want to spend my time on it now so the next task is establishing system of uh, intellectual and emotional communication so there should be a system of intellectual and emotional communication okay then we have to establish a workable relationship with the relatives so there are uh, a particular character is shown from the couple that okay once they are getting married they start to, to establish their own family they don't want to have any relationship with the relatives okay so that's not good okay so we have to establish a workable relationship with the relatives in the initial phase of marriage then establishing ways of interacting with friends associates and community organizations good then the next task is facing the possibility of children and planning of their coming it's very important that we have to face the possibility of children and they should plan for their coming then they have to establish a workable philosophy of life as a couple so they have to be uh, genuine they have to be trustworthy and they have to follow the values of a uh, marriage according to their cultural background or according to their religious practice then they have to establish a parenthood okay all these are the important task uh, that they have to establish in the first phase of marriage so the detailed explanation is given in the text please go and read it and understand if you have got any doubts please to message or even mail me okay so we have got enough explanation enough notes in the test so that yeah, definitely that can help you to avoid a lot of misconceptions and your ignorance so that you can help the people who are having a lot of problem with this areas